Hello, everyone. Welcome to a kind of a belated start to ADV Moto Live number 19. Uh, hey, John McWilliams, how you doing today? Uh, got the chat room. Some of the folks have moved over. Uh, but uh, yeah, today uh, we got some really awesome topics with all of the mistakes we make and crazy things we see as writers. There has to be some room for good old comedy, right? How can we make entertaining videos? Um, how is motorcycling been represented in Hollywood. So stick around as we talk with some of the most experienced broadcast talent in the ADV world tonight on ADV Moto Live number 19. All right. With the growing popularity of ADV in recent years, a wide range of video types have been made. Most of the ones we see are travel documentaries, which you know kind of share the riding experiences. We can see the roads and, and the people and the places that, that people get to explore on their bike. Some of them are jaw-dropping action flicks that you know show us what these amazing bikes can do by some of the world's best riders. But what happens when highly experienced Hollywood actors and directors get into ADV? <laughs> the only answer is madness. From the studios of Hollywood, to the back roads of the MABDR. Everyone, please welcome <coughs> award-winning actor and director, John Putch and Rich Montgomery. How's hey! it going, guys? Oh my God, look, it's, the, it's Carl Parker. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's crazy out here. It's, I got, I got look John it, and Rich. Oh, look, it's really here. happening. Oh my God, it's happening. And he's down in his little right-hand corner that he always appears in. That's his... right, I'm in my squirrel corner. Oh God, this, squirrel is, corner. this is fantastic. Thank you for having us. No, yeah. thank you guys for, for coming on. You know, I've been, I've been really enjoying, uh, you know, the videos, the, the spoof um, kind of parody videos that you guys put out. And, uh, and uh, you know, anything that can make some folks laugh these, day, these days is, is, is good. So. Can you guys go ahead and kick off and uh, you know tell us uh, a little bit about yourselves? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, my name's John Putch, and uh, I am uh, a rider from when I was a child, and uh, then left it for many years when I lived in a very urban and metropolitan area, and picked it up again when I was able to uh, move to a, a more uh, safe and country and mountainous region of the U.S. And, uh, and now I'm back into it. And uh, I used to be an actor uh, for many years, and then I became a director. And I've sort of been, uh, you know, punking around in the uh, blue collar world of TV for uh, the last 20 years. And uh, now I'm back to riding and uh, using my little GoPros and my iPhones uh, and get my uh, buddies together and go out and ride and make some videos so that's what that's what i've been doing awesome and rich uh my name is rich montgomery i live in uh, alexander virginia and uh got back into riding seriously about uh, five or six years ago and uh about the same time john did i think and we crossed paths through a mutual friend and started riding together and then uh started making videos together just kind of without really a set plan uh it's this just kind of unfolded organically just about having some fun and making rides breaking them up kind of taking little pot shots of some of these very serious uh, motor logs and ride reports and the best thing for me is is like i've got an actor riding with me you know a guy who's hilarious and he says hey i want to fall down on this shot can i just can i do you mind if i trip over and fall over that that fence i go no you got to do the tripping and falling over so i've got someone here that wants to do all this comedy bits and you know i'm literally going yeah I, all i got to do is shoot it i don't have to do any of it so Hats off to Rich for being the clown that he is, and uh, you know, being what he, doing what he did in those those videos. It was hilarious. It made me yeah. laugh. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, uh, for the guys perhaps that are online that haven't seen it, although we shared it out through our channels, right? You guys did two spoof videos on the Mid Atlantic BDR. The first one, I believe, it was the first one. That was called the Treasures mm -hmm. of of the MABDR, and then the second one <laughs> was what again? What was that one? It's called somewhere 
on the MABDR. That's right. Yeah. Somewhere on on yeah. the MABDR. If you guys haven't uh -huh. seen them, they are they are totally hilarious. Uh, ADV Garage is asking, "Have you bought a Beamer yet?" <laughs> <laughs> well, not yet. No, We're, the stickers. Uh, we thought the stickers would do it, but no, yeah. we haven't, you yeah. didn't turn them into Beamers. And and so far, uh, Ted Moyer of BMW Motorcycles. Of America has yet to offer a sponsorship where we have CS twelve hundred roll up at our door for the next ride. But fingers crossed, we're still hopeful. Yeah, well, you're competing with guys like you and Charlie, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course yeah. we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna happen. It is something gonna happen. Just watch something happen. No, you know, uh, they aren't really. I don't know that they're spoofs, but. We uh, we have such reverence for the BDR guys and the BDR folks uh, and what they've done and created these 10 routes and the maps and the GPX files. It's just it, it's nirvana to someone like me who's come back to it because I don't have to map crap. I can literally drop it in my GPS and and go anywhere in the mid Atlantic or the northeast or wherever or, or Colorado or wherever. And they've done it for me. And they make movies, as you know. And Sterling Noreen makes the movies. And they're so fun to watch. And they're fascinating. And everybody drools over them. And then we all go out and ride these routes. So, um, but I love those movies. I bought every single one of them. And uh, the, we just thought of funny stuff to do, uh, which hearkened to those films. And really, they were like private jokes to, to the folks that made the movies. Yeah. You know, we would we would do little bits and call out people from the films and have not knowing if they'd ever see them or not. But yeah. for for us who watch the movies, you know, somebody might get a laugh out of it. And then uh, th then the second one just became, you know, more hijinks, really. Uh, <laughs> and we they're not really they don't have a point, really. We just sort of just yeah, hook and zing, you know, it's a good point. They're not. Uh they're not intended as spoofs of anything. We're making fun of ourselves, obviously, mm -hmm. and making fools of ourselves, or at least I am. Um, well, you know, when you make a move, when you make a home video, you know, we, we, we're doing it in reverence of them. And, but when you make a home video, all you want, really want to do is edit something together, do some goofy stuff, edit it together, and then show it to your friends and yeah. your, your family. And that's kind of what, what it is. And, uh, you know, the last thing I, I, I want to see is j yet another POV shot going down a dirt road in the forest, you know, from a, a chest cam or, or a helmet cam uh, for like 20 minutes. So we, we tried we tried to do less of that and more of other stuff, which then required Richie doing pratfalls and mm. taking drone strikes to his head and things like that. So Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, something that the audience might not know. Um, about about John is is uh, you know John you came from an acting and theater family um, your father Bill Putch and mother Jean Stapleton were hot in what I call the heydays of TV broadcasting mm -hmm. right you know so so I'm talking about like 60s 70s maybe like the early 80s mm -hmm. um, you know um, uh, and, and and your mother if the audience is not familiar with her name she was I, would, I, I don't know you can correct me if this is incorrect but Maybe her most famous role was Edith from All in the Family. Very um, much so. You're yeah, very with, correct. Uh, with um, uh, the main actor, uh, I believe his name is Carol O'Connor. And from what I understand, and I did some research, I watched them together. They actually seemed to be very close. Um, yeah, he was a nice guy to her, to my mom. And my mom was a, an incredible professional actress. She was never a celebrity. And she was always just an actress. And uh, she, you know, they, he was nice to her and they had a great relationship working on that show. And yes, my father was a, my father was a theater director and he had his own summer stock theater in uh, South Central Pennsylvania where I was born. And uh, he, uh, and my, my sister, my mother and I uh, would work there every summer uh, as either actors. I used to park cars, run the follow spot uh you know do props just take the set up and down every week and uh we ha we had a nice time there and uh and then of course she hit big with that show in the early 70s and you know our, everyone's life changed at that point we 
we uh, kept doing the theater, but then that took us to California, and that's how I got involved in television, because I started acting as a young man in television. Yeah, so what was the earliest thing, you know, that you actually performed in? Uh, well, when I was six years old, um, I was thrust on stage at this theater in PA, uh, Totem Pole, in, in a show, a production of Showboat. And, uh, you know, I was this little kid in the chorus, and that was the first thing I'd ever done. Uh, and then when we got to California, um, I was, I don't know, 10 or 11, and uh, I got, of course, I got booked on All in the Family as a little Boy Scout in one of these episodes. So that was my first television experience, which was wildly strange because there were giant cameras. I mean, they were big. They were the size of, you know, small vehicles, and they were, like, pointing at your face and, Wait a second. Hold on. That makes me sound really old. <laughs> the, the camera's being so big, but <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not that old. Anyway, uh, yeah. So it was, uh, and then I started working as an actor all through my teens and and uh, into my uh, 20s. And then I made the transition to directing because I was always making films the whole time. I'm a big Super 8 filmmaker. In fact, I used to make Super 8 movies with my uh, motorcycle. And my friends down in PA, I had a good friend, and we had bikes, and we would be out all the time with the Super 8 camera shooting stuff, like those shots you just showed of the, me jumping the power line and stuff. We, we did n numerous films, you know, with the, with the motorcycles. Um, so it's pretty fun to do it again at this age. Ah. Awesome. So it's like, a, so is there a certain amount of kind of like reliving your off-road riding well, Stranger. yeah, yeah. You know, my dad, who you see pictured right now, uh, he gave me my first camera. Uh, he gave me a Super 8 camera when, I don't know, I must have been in fifth or sixth grade. And uh, he said, here, uh, go. He got me some film and his camera. And he, he said, go, go out and, you know, go out with your friends and, you know, come back and bring me something to watch, you know, make a movie. And, of course, he taught us how to do everything first, and then he gave me the camera, so, because he was a big Super 8 guy himself, and uh, and that's what got me hooked, really, and all through high school, I would make epic Super 8 movies. In fact, some of my best movies are Super 8s. <laughs> Not kidding. That's anyway. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, the technology is part of it, mm. right, but, but, but a lot of it really is just... It's just the vision of of the creator, right, and the leadership skills, right, and, and and the ability to communicate what that vision is with a team of people, and you know, and then somehow magically have all of this stuff, you know, get pulled together and recorded on camera, right? I mean, it's it's actually a pretty amazing creative process. Yeah, it's it's a lot of moving parts. Let me tell you, a lot of, a lot of moving parts, a lot of opinions, and uh, <laughs> that's why I like. Just to be out on the trail, me and Rich, with like four GoPros and a couple of iPhones, and literally going, do we want to pull over and do a bit here? Nah, I'm kind of hungry. Let's just keep going. <laughs> you know, it's way more... <sighs> Unscripted. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. So then, when did you guys start riding together, like, off-road ADV? I don't know, like th two, three years ago. Right, Rich? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rich had just gotten, he had this beautiful Moto Guzzi that I was salivating over even before I had a, a, a bike again. And, uh, and then he, he, uh, you know, he kept buying bikes. He had two Yamahas since then. And then the one he's on. And, and by that time I had, I had gotten a couple of bikes myself. I went through like three, four different bikes before I landed on the, on the Triumph Tiger, you know, the, the ADV style. I, I had a street scrambler. I had a DR650, I had a, you know, I had an old vintage Suzuki, you know, I kept going, trying to like move to all these, you know, when you get back into it, you want, you want all the things you had when you were a kid. And then I finally, you know, landed on the, on the ADV bike, which gave me everything I needed in one bike. It was like the, the, just the Swiss army knife of riding. Cause I love gravel. I love dirt. You know, I'm I'm not a long range road guy, so the the ADV world is perfect for me because I'm I'm hunting while I'm riding the pavement. I'm hunting for you know a nice gravel road, and because uh, I don't know, there's something about it. Less traffic, little excitement. It just feels different, 
and uh so yeah so i got that bike and then uh i gotta tell you rich hats off the guy has a full-time job i i invited two other guys on this ride on these rides and none of them showed except rich and he doesn't even have an adv bike this guy <laughs> did did the rides on a street bike on a sport you know an upright you know gt a tracer gt a yamaha he didn't even have a skid plate the guy went down po patty road you know trail with on on that yamaha it was fantastic anyway none of these other guys showed up richie shows up and we, you know boom we got a movie too so thank you rich appreciate it thanks for you know uh, when when john first set up the mabdr um and i i know i don't have an adv bike he was like we're doing this it was like six months out and i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna do this i don't know because i didn't know how technical it was and as the date approached uh -huh. it's like all right i'm booking rooms <laughs> i'm doing this let me take the time off that's literally kind of how the first one started and so I'm rich did you thankful because i was like you know well we'll see we'll see we'll see and and as the dates approach i'm like all right i'm doing this let's just do it so rich did you have any off-road riding experience before doing no i mean i you know so i started out like most people that get in uh a three and a half horsepower briggs of stratton mini bike when i was 11 years old and then i grew up in the country so my friends anybody that had a dirt bike we all had a dirt bike and that didn't that wasn't my entire childhood but there was a lot of it there was always a somebody with a YZ80 or an RM or whatever. And you just, we would just ride them until we tore them up to the point we couldn't fix them anymore. And then we wouldn't have one and somebody else would get one, but no. And I, I was never trained. So when I took the, the class to get back into riding, it's like, oh, this is how you're actually supposed to ride a motorcycle. Cause we just like kids, you know, I didn't mm. know anything. So no, I didn't have any off-road experience before we did this. Uh, MABDR on the street bike. So, but you know that, and ever as everyone knows that rides these things, the MABDR is apparently the the easiest one of yeah. them all. So it, you know, it's no surprise that you're able to do it on on Rich's bike. Uh, but you know what, I I watch this guy ride, and I I wouldn't be afraid to say, hey, bring that yamaha on the on the northeast bdr or you know or or any of the other ones you know with the right tires i i bet he could I, i'm sure it would work so we'll see we'll test that out next summer we'll see <laughs> yeah, right. well, well you know rich you aren't too far from us here if you're in alexandria we're only i know about 30 minutes away or something like that if there's you no ride. you know if, if there's no traffic we have a tenere 700 here you're more than welcome to stop by test it for spin and we've got a himalayan I'd love to Himalayan here too as well, yeah. which, which I would encourage you to give a fair shake uh, because that's my daily ride. I love it. it it's, yeah. it's just fun just getting around. I yeah. love that bike. I love both of those bikes. I wish I could have both. Yeah. Well, you are also, of course, standing invite. Uh, you know, come down yes. and try thank them you. Out. We'll, we'll I remember. Go, we'll all go for for a spin. Yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, both of you guys have an entertainment background. You know, uh, what are your thoughts on how motorcycles and riders are kind of represented in entertainment? The media you know hate it I, you, oh you hate it <laughs> hate it it's it's a bunch of uh, you know biker gang villain guys i mean i you hardly ever see anything other than that you know i mean you 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 could go back as far as the mid 70s early 70s there was a movie with redford and michael j pollard called little foss and big halsey i mean it was a it was a seminal bike video for movie for guys you know my age and back then and it, and it was about enduro and dirt bikes and you know they were kind of hoodlums but they weren't like you know packs of riders with matching vests you know and tattoos everywhere and you know i i hope to make a, a bike movie someday that doesn't have any of that it just is you know not not about the 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 evil bike packs of people which seems to be the only thing i i see Unless somebody can recommend, I'm happy to watch anything that's not that. Anyway, yeah, well, sorry. I, like, I don't have an opinion on that, by the way, Carl. Just, you know. <laughs> Clearly. Just, uh. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's been stuff like, you know, I mean, even if it's just not motorcycle-centric, you know, like, I mean, I guess you get these famous scenes like in Terminator, you know, where Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I guess he's on a Harley, and he's got that shotgun spinning thing he does. Mm-hmm. 
But I guess you're right. I guess most of the time people are represented as motorcyclists, either as ballsy heroes, mm-hmm. right, who do crazy stuff, or swarms of bad guys wearing black on super motards or dirt bikes. Yeah, I got you know I got to you know blame I mean? Hollywood. You know the 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 people that sit in Hollywood and write their their screenplays, they're making crap up. You know, and that's that's the culture that they they know. They they don't know about dirt bikes. You know, they don't know about dirt track racing and, and, and you know, motocross. They don't know hill climbing. They don't know any of that stuff and, uh, and unless they've done it. And you, you, it never makes its way to, to the movies. It's, it's phenomenal. It's amazing. I mean, however, you know, I heard that, you know, the new James Bond, supposedly he's, he's riding one of those Triumph 1200 Scramblers, which everyone was all excited about because, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a Harley or something. But uh, that, that remains to be seen. So when that yeah. comes out, maybe we'll get a nice look at something different, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and then there have been documentaries like where the locals ride in the chat room just said, you know, you can go all the way back to on any Sunday, oh, the best ever. I yeah. mean, just, it, just the movie that just, just affected all of us, you know, yeah. back then. Oh, th- that movie was amazing. I mean, and when you, when you, <laughs> you go to, you go to like bike shows or something and you, you know, you'll hear someone say Mert Lawwell or, or, or Malcolm Smith, you know, or like whatever, these guys that only if you knew the movie and you were around in the seventies knew about these guys and you just go, what? <laughs> you can't believe that someone knows that really showing my age here, by the way. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> well, you can always trust Eddie Moto to uncover the truth. The truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right oh, on. Man. Right on. Okay, so you know, I mean, you guys, um, or you know, uh, you both produce more than than just a humorous, uh, you know, than just the two humorous ADV shorts based on the uh, MABDR. You know, they're uh, they have produced a series which I recently fallen in love with. It's a trilogy. Uh, it's called Route 30, um, and uh, in it, and just as a as a fast summary for the audience, uh, and it's definitely worth watching. Uh, it's in summary. It's a story about a small town uh, in South Central Pennsylvania, and a lot of really madcap stuff that goes on. I mean, it's it's wacky, also science fictiony, and I mean, it's just wild. You just you just have to watch it. And there's three parts to it. But I noticed that you have some moto lifestyle moments in there as well. I mean, mm-hmm. in the first one, you have the scene where it's the guy on a two-stroke with the milk crate on the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the actor? Dan. What was his name? I'm sorry. Kevin Rom. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kevin Rom. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he was being chased by what they thought was Sasquatch mm-hmm. through, <laughs> through the woods. And he gets, gets yep. up, and he crashes the bike, and he injures his back. Yep. Right? And that sets him on another line of adventure um, uh, with some healers, some Christian scientist healers, and all <laughs> kinds of other wild stuff. You know, so the question is, you know, how do you work motorcycling into a greater message <laughs> of a story? You know what I mean? Oh, man. That was so accidental. It was unbelievable. Uh, that story about the guy riding his dirt bike on the trail and seeing a, a Bigfoot is from my childhood. There was a kid in my, you know, town in Fayetteville who swore to, swore to up and down that that happened to him. He said some weird mountain man or Bigfoot crossed his path and started chasing him one day. And he, he it was a story. It was like something that we just couldn't believe. And we all wanted to go up onto this trail and look for this dude or monster or whatever it was. And that's where that came from. But the the whole, I you know, he he needed to go see a Christian scientist. So I had, I just somehow smashed the whole, uh, he, he threw his back out when he was riding the bike away. But, you know, I wanted to have a bike in the movie at Route 30 because I used to ride a two-stroke Suzuki, you know, 185 when I was a kid and and uh, I wanted a bike of that style for the movie because it meant a lot to me and uh, and of course I thought I'd have to buy it so I knew it would be cheap so uh, I had to source you know a bike and I found this guy in Newville PA who had a collection of bikes and then we ended up shooting uh, part uh, Route 30 part 3 there's a whole sequence at that guy's 
uh, garage uh, uh, that lent me the bike for, for part one. And he had a Honda Elsinore two-stroke from like 75. It was perfect. Oh, very cool. And uh, so he, he brought it down and let us use it in the movie. And it, it made me feel good to watch that, shoot that again. It, it was almost like doing the old stuff when I was a kid, you know, seeing that thing zing by. And when I say zing, I mean zing, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> that was fun. Uh, but yeah, and then uh, this guy, this guy Justin Myers in Newville, PA, has this beautiful bike barn and uh, repair shop, and we ended up shooting. I put a character. I set a whole sequence at there at part three of the movie, where he was a, a bike repair guy, and uh, and there was a whole scene with a nice Yamaha 360, like a '73 Yamaha 360. It was beautiful, uh, green. And it's in part three, and you know, I just, want, you know, I featured it. You know, there's all these wide shots of it in the scene, and uh, that was really cool. Uh, and they're still up there. I'm telling you, this guy's great. He's he collects these bikes and fixes them, and he's got a whole business going on. Big good friend of the trilogy. Very cool. So beyond a personal interest, you know, how do you how do you work? Um, you know, like the idea of someone that rides motorcycles. If you were going to you know, uh, uh, make that a character, uh, uh, color or, 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 or tint, you know I mean? How do you think a, a motorcycle or just the visage of someone on a motorcycle impacts the meaning or, or that section of a story? You speaking of route 30, you mean that's just in part, general or in general? Um, yeah, you know, like well, what the I bike just, symbolize in for me, for me, know, like I don't, I don't ever see me in my life with a motorcycle in anything in any film or tv or anything i i yeah. see it in our magazines we read i see it on our on youtube i see it you know you know all the places that us guys like us you know look for content but i never see it you know coming to me on television you know narratively speaking mm -hmm. so um all i see is again you know the the harleys the tattoos and the matching jackets you know and vests <laughs> and stuff and uh why do you why do you want to wear a matching vest i don't understand you know grown men wearing matching vests anyway uh anyway well, all so, right i'm sorry so no it's okay it's okay it's okay it's it's sort of so an I, off question too yeah it's i a, want it, i i would love to see that so so i wish i wish someday i'd like to see that maybe i'll have to do it myself but that's the kind of thing i would like to see uh if if i had my druthers oh right on right I guess there was Motorcycle Diaries, which was a movie that was made oh, about yep. a, about the book, about Che Guevara. Mm -hmm. I read the book, and I saw the movie. I don't think the movie did the did the book justice. Um, but it did have a lot of motorcycles in it, which is which is good. But, okay, so from a storytelling from a storytelling standpoint, you know, most ADV videos are, they're like documentaries or they're ride reports. Um, you know, like I said, or their or their 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 action sequences that are sewn together with cool music. You know, how does someone make videos with a different purpose, either humor or just a straight fictional storytelling? You know, so you know, if someone's on on a trip and they want to tell a little story about something that happened to them or something that they kind of saw and made them kind of like reflect, are there any hints or tips to actually you know pulling something together or at least be comfortable being on a camera, like expressing yourself on a camera? I mean, that's that's a major hurdle for a lot of people. I don't know. Rich, what do you think? Um, like what I did to Rich just the there? Camera. Like I just went. <laughs> well, people, uh, <laughs> I know John has coached many more people in the camera than I have. <laughs> you're, either you're a trained actor and you know the tricks or you have to be yourself. Because when people who aren't trained actors are trying to act or emote or be funny, it just it doesn't look good so i think and and you see this in like the bdr films they're they're not trying to be anything it's just like these are who these this, this is who these people are and this is the moment and he's capturing it and, and it can be woven together in a story to do it humorously i don't know i was saying to john i think that um a lot of people now maybe not now if they're watching this would just think that john and i are a couple of uh, oafish types goofing off and having fun and not realizing especially in the second one that, that, that was very scripted, you know, um, it was set up like a, in a very microscopic way, like a real camera shoot. So there's, we do 
you know, different points of view. We do a master shot, we do all these things and then move the cameras around and clean it up. When you're watching it, it just looks like what you see. Cut here, cut there, his shot, my shot, that kind of thing. So, you know, and, and we did it quick and dirty, of course, because it's about the ride as much as anything else. Uh, so we weren't doing many, many takes, but yeah. Um, I think if you're going to try and do that, you just gotta, you just gotta be yourself and that, and you're seeing the lines of that blurring now with reality TV versus scripted narrative stuff that now, of course, all that reality TV, I'm utterly convinced. I'm sure John knows is all scripted and the producers are pitting people against each other and making up things that aren't really there. Um, and it's like this weird blurring of lines. So I don't know. I think if you want to do humorous things or try a different take, you, you mostly just gotta be yourself. Now, do you have any tips for people that want to be themselves, but they just feel uncomfortable in front of a camera? Yeah, I, you know, I was going to, just to tag on to what Rich said in the original question, I think you, you just, uh, you have to just, if, if you want to shoot video and cut something together and make a, an entertainment piece, just do what feels right for you, you know, whether it's like, copying someone else's style just because it'd be fun to do that's cool or you know coming up with something new and different or or you just have to want to do it but i gotta say you know everyone who's shot video on their bikes and stop and has to stop and pull over to do a, a drive-by every you know 20 minutes because you won't have enough footage other than that patented pov shot front and rear you know uh it's 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 a pain in the ass and uh, you know, there's you just have to have commitment to like literally doing you know those things to give yourself the editor enough footage to go home and and edit with. Um, I don't know. I think you just if you're the type of person that wants to fart around on camera, then you know it's going to be easy for you. But I, I'm not sure there's a, a advice to give to someone who wants. I, you you got to really just want to do it. You know and it, it, Doing it is no problem. Everyone's got the little cameras, and there's, there's no there's no issue. There's nothing standing in your way from doing it because you know every you know GoPros and drones and all that stuff are are so easy to deal with. So it's not like you need a an incredibly expensive kit of equipment. You know, it's pretty pretty inexpensive to do. Yeah. So I guess like most things, it just comes down to practice. You just have to do it. Oh then, well, there's that. Yeah. And you got, and it's fun if you're a good editor, you know, um, you know, if you're a good editor, it's, it's helpful because you can really have some fun in the edit room. You know? Yeah. 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 And then you can do the real storytelling. Yeah. We you tried, know. we tried not to, even though we scripted stuff on the second video, we, the first video was just literally not scripted and we were just, we had some ideas and then we just, it would come to us on the spot and go, Oh, let's do a bit here about, you know, yeah. BDR person A or Z and oh let's do a bit here and then the second one we thought you know we we were we got so serious about having material that it uh, I got a little it got a little unfun for me and then uh, and, and then once we relaxed and said well whatever we if it, we don't come up with anything it's fine yeah and then all of a sudden it happens and then you go oh I'm so happy that happened so not having expectation I think might be the the key in everything, isn't it? Yeah, sure. But we were both okay with like at a certain point because we we had ideas and we were coming up with bits and and then the day of the ride came and I think there was an unspoken okay. It's like, you know what? We don't get enough stuff to make a good film. We're still going to have this great ride, mm -hmm. you know. And, yeah. and let's not let that be a burden or force anything. And then when that relaxation happened, then we had some real good stuff that we came up with and. Some of that stuff was just right there on the spot. And there, there is one other thing to say, like that first one wasn't scripted completely. I didn't think when we finished that these little goofy bits that we'd done around the idea that we were kind of following behind the, the BDR folks and finding nuggets or, or remnants from when they were there or making note of a place where they may have stopped and camped or whatever. I didn't think there was enough to, to, to make anything that you could call a, piece and john when he when he put it all together the way he did and created this this thing i was i was shocked and blown away because i'm a video editor too not near with the level of experience that he had but he, john was the one that made magic out of some pieces of things 
you know? And so when we had fun doing that, we're like, all right, let's do another one. Only let's, uh, let's, let's, you know, do a little bit more planning. I really love riding these things with Rich, but now I, now I kind of, now the pressure's on for us to make, you know, come up with another thing to do on, on the next one. And, you know, we want to do the NEBDR next, uh, mm. in the Northeast uh, because it's on the East coast and it's easier for Rich to get to. And, uh, you know, we have, we're keeping notes, but you know, we're really, you know, whatever, we still want to ride the, ride the route, but now there's, there's, you know, we put our, our own set of pressure on ourselves for it. You know, not that anyone cares what we think and how much pressure we are under, but you know, we, we, we it's fun. You know, we, we want to have fun and we're kind of like video guys. So it's kind of seems like we, you know, we got to shoot something. You know, and then there's always, we don't have the camera rolling and Rich sees a bear, you know, or something that we could have used, you know, so that, that always yeah. happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I guess you need to talk about doing the NEBR, you guys, with all this COVID stuff, you guys even just have like a rough time frame for when, when you guys want to. Well, it's all, it's, fun it's all weather, that? it's weather dependent, you know, that the Northeast route, it, you know, the snow is still up in the you know in maine and new hampshire and into june you know sometimes so we're we're looking at july ish maybe june july late june early july i hope you know that's a long way off but i'm i'm like mentally preparing and i'm like you know goading rich into like you know keep thinking that way <laughs> you know and maybe maybe the the guys at bmw will lend rich you know a gs or something wow. you know because it's going to be a tougher route you know, we, we wouldn't even need the stickers, you know, to put Yamaha. over, you know, or maybe Yamaha will lend me a, a new 700 or a yes, yes. You never know. We could try. Uh, so you're a big Yamaha fan, man. Yeah, I am right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a crazy about a certain brand, but I had the XSR 100, 900 before this one. And I just love that tracer. And I've been telling John, like, I do want to get a proper ADV bike. I don't really, I'm not really set up for two bikes right now. Uh, in any way and uh, so I don't want to give that bike up I just I love that bike I love it every time I ride it uh, I've got 15k on it I just had it a little over a year so I ride a lot and uh, you know I'd, if I could have a second bike I'd get a pure ADV bike or maybe even a, an off-road bike but so that's why I'm doing that it wasn't to prove a point or like I'm just going to take a street bike who cares it was like, this is the bike I have, so we're going to go, we're going to do yeah. it. Yeah, no. It, I it outfit was... it with a bunch of, you know, it's not made for that. So, yeah, you can buy a crash cage for it and all this stuff, but I didn't want to outfit it with that stuff. I just thought, I'm going to be very careful and not drop the bike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what happened. And luckily, it worked it, out. It worked out. He, we he, had some hairy moments, for sure. I mean, that, that second time, the water crossings at one point were Oh, crazy. my God. The exhaust underwater, full underwater, his, his tailpipe, like, Oh my God! On section two or three, I don't remember what it was. Oh and, my God! Yeah, and he got out of there fine. Yeah, and not having ridden like that before, you know, like <laughs> yeah. unless it was when when, well, when, when you were young. I mean, that's a real butt pinching <laughs> moment, you know, right oh, there. You know, to to that, Carl, I'll say, I, I, you know, some people have been communicating either on social media or you know, Revzilla picked up this, and, and Lance Oliver wrote a little article about it, and that's people have been commenting on that, and they will ping me privately and say. You know, I'm thinking about doing the BDR, how tough is it? And there seems to be, for people that aren't like long and the tooth riders in the ADV world, and I just say, I am no expert rider. I don't know any special tricks. Um, I, I don't really ride with much fear, but I'm not out there hot dogging. And if I think if I could do it, most people can do it. If I think if you go into it with hesitancy and you're, you're, you're tightened up, just like when you're riding, when you're a brand new rider, that's not a good way to ride. And if yeah. you can relax and, and, uh, you know, because we we got through some hairy spots, and uh, John's had a whole lot more off road experience than I did. So I would sometimes watch him. But um, if I, I think if I could do it, other people, especially for the MABDR. So there's anybody out there listening, going, I don't know if I'm up for that. I personally wouldn't do it alone, just because you can get up to really remote areas, and if you just have to even fall over, or something happens to you, or debris in the road knocks you over, and you get injured, it wouldn't be good to be up there by yourself. But I wouldn't be hesitant to do it or worried about do i have the skills to do it yeah you know solo traveling like if someone really did want to solo travel 
on, on one of these routes. And I understand the rewards of, you know, solo travel. Probably I would say the best thing to do would be to do it on a, on a, on a small light bike. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Be- because you're not in a rush anyway, or you yeah. know, hopefully, and even if you do drop it, it's not, it's not a really big, <laughs> you know, you could probably pick it up a couple times a day if you, you know, like if you needed to. And, if, and as long as it can do 55, 60 miles an hour, mm-hmm. uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you know, but you get better fuel economy and, you know, like all that kind of stuff. I mean, if you're just going to be on the back roads. Now, if you have to slug it back an interstate to go home or something. Yeah. Which we do. Yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah, that's different. I'm going to ride my bike to the NEBDR, so I, I would love to have a Himalaya, but I don't see myself, me being 200 pounds, and then putting 60 pounds of gear on that 25 horsepower motorcycle and then riding it up to the starting point of the NEBDR. I don't know that, you know, on the highway, it might could do it. I haven't ridden one, but I'm just thinking that's, that's 25 horses of power. I, you know, I, if I'm on a highway, I want enough horsepower to get me out of trouble, you know. Yeah, you know, well, people texting or big trucks or whatever. Well, I mean, you would have to do it back roads. Yeah. To, you know, or I mean, you, trailer you would have to. Yeah. yeah, or yeah, or just or or, or just uh, trailer it up. But pro- probably once you got on it, you know, when, once you got on the route, you would you would feel more more confident. Well, I'm, I'm going to come after you, Alfred. I'm going to come out there and ride yours because I'm anxious to see what the bike feels like. I just oh, do it. It's so much fun, man. Do it. That's cool, you know. Uh, and we have a WR two fifty R over here, and that is a good mate with the uh, Himalayan as far as having riding buddies. They both do about the same speed. They're both really good off road, uh, you know. And if you wanted to borrow the bike, you know, to go mess around, that's it's 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 entirely cool, man. I'm coming to see you. Do it. Do it. Uh, hit me up later. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, uh, one of the, one of the last couple questions is, you know, gear wise here. Okay. I mean, you know. Like you said in the opening of the of the of the second video, you know, we don't need no dro- drones or nothing like that. You know what I mean? I mean, realistically, you know, what is the basic kit of gear that someone would need to produce something simple? And then, uh, and then, if sky's the limit, what would that be for you guys? You mean for uh, uh, film gear? Correct. Yes. Correct. Oh. Well, I, these these GoPro 4Ks are great, and uh, you know the Hero Black. Not the not the other not the silver but the black has voice control, so like you you literally once you you can set it all up you know your specs how you want it and then all you got to do is like either push a button to start it or say GoPro start recording, and then GoPro stop recording and it's fantastic it's sort of like a hands free device and if you have a big enough card, you're good. Uh, I find them to be quite amazing and. Uh, we we used them for the dialogue scenes. You know, we had one pointing at each other with a clamp on a picnic table, and we had one next to each other, and we each operated a camera pointing at each other, <clears throat> so I could edit the scenes where we were just talking, uh, you know, like you would a television show. And uh, th- there was so much frame size. You know, we could blow up the shot. I could blow the shot up and and you know, crop the cameras out, which were literally right next to us. You know, I, I got a camera right next to me. It's pointing at Rich. He's got a camera next to him. It's pointing at me. So I blow the shot up and no camera. So it looks like we've had a film crew there. Uh, I like the GoPros. I like the 4K on the new iPhone. It's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a DSLR like the great, you know, Sterling Noreen has. And uh, we didn't have a tripod. We, we had a lot of bendy, clampy devices you know that you that you could uh you literally just twist twist the gopro on take it off the, the mount off the uh, bike and uh clamp it to a tree limb or you know just drop it down there's the uh uh, uh ram mount makes this thing called a tough claw yeah it's, it's awesome. an, do you know the what i'm talking about thing. Yeah, it's amazing claw. it's like this big polyurethane clamp with a knob and it clamps and it's got the ball on it, and you can do anything with that thing. It's amazing. Uh, so I don't know. I bought another after the last BDR. I got one more GoPro. I forgot to tell you, Rich. Um, so now, so we have. I, I have one mounted on the uh, two mounted on my bike. One pointing at Rich. One pointing either at me or ahead. And now I've got a third one. I could just pull out of the pannier, and you know, drop it on the ground and not have to take it off the bike and use the same camera. So um, I don't know. I mean, that's really all you need. Uh, and if you're going to do, if you want good sound, 
if you're if you care about your dialogue don't just record off the GoPro from 25 feet away turn your iPhone on or your phone and use the recording device on it and sync your shot up by clapping you know old school and have the have the phone in your hand or in your pocket or near you and uh, record your dialogue that's what I wish we did in that scene at the picnic bench rich we should have run oh yeah we should have run audio because the I had to I had to process the audio in yeah, that in that sure. scene because of all the background noise. Yeah. So oh, I would yeah. say good sound is important if you're if you're doing narration or dialogue. Uh, otherwise, those things are amazing. Yeah, and actually, the digital recording devices now are mm -hmm. crazy. Oh yeah. I mean, they're tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are tiny and they even have XLR inputs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's and it's just amazing. I mean. I still think it's weird trying to get digital onto a video recording device. Like unless you have a pro camera, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Actually putting the putting the audio track onto the video seems to be hard. You almost always when you're using small devices, mm -hmm. you almost always have to do them separately. Do them separate. Think. Yep. Yeah, 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 which which adds to the adds to the post-production organization of it. Yeah, you know I mean, mean, but you know, all these, you know, even the Final Cut and Premiere, they all sync audio with via waveform now so you can just throw them in in there and highlight them and click you know click merge and boom they're they're sunk it's amazing yeah awesome so how about so drones easy. you know i know you guys were kind of we are getting a drone <laughs> what you heard it here first yeah. everyone are you, gonna, are you, gonna tell them what you heard it here folks, first <laughs> first we have to get a drone well yeah, we're still yeah. gonna we're we still have to do some gags but you know <laughs> Maybe that's what the next one's about. Hey, we got a drone. What are we going to do with it? You know, who knows? Take, take the drone, run it into trees and other riders. I mean, you just, you know. Kids on the street and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's just, they're just too good. I mean, if we can send that up and get some shots of us, you know, we would get overhead shots. We'd go above on a switchback and get above and, and point down with the cameras and then like drive by underneath it, you know, old school, <laughs> you know, to get an, an, air, an aerial view. But, oh my God, that took forever. Yeah. So. You should just do a okay. montage. You should, you should just do a montage of Rich flying the drone. Yeah. And then, and then it hitting like all these people in the countryside. Five straight minutes of drone strikes. I think that would okay. be- Okay, all right, hold on there. Don't don't take our gags away, Carl. We have a, oh, sorry. We have a whole story. drone thing planned and don't yeah. talk about it, okay? No spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Taking, you're yeah. peeling the lid off right now. Yeah, <laughs> okay. come on. Carl's been Carl's been peeking at our, our notes. Oh, he saw yeah. our notes. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, you have a bad boy about that stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, all right, guys. So, uh, you know, we kind of have to sort of wrap it up here soon. Uh, definitely, please, please stay on the line. Uh, even after the show's over, we can kind of uh, green room out a little bit. But right. uh, do you guys uh, have any words of advice for future ADV writers out there? Uh, Rich, you want to start? me just just get out there and do it you know don't outride your skill and start on simple gravel roads and get used to the bike slipping around under you a little bit and you get comfortable with that then you're ready to go that's what i did so just get out there and do it you know don't outride your skill that's what oh, i would yeah. say right on man i, I would on. I, my advice would be you know it's really expensive this it's like scuba diving the, this ADV thing, you you can really go broke uh, with it. But uh, if you if you were on a budget and you got the bike you wanted, uh, you could really lose your shirt with the with the gear. And uh, just uh, a, a, an important a, a helmet is important. Obviously, a good helmet, not a cheapo helmet, and and some some kind of armor, at least on your upper body. Uh, and proper boots. Uh, those are the kind of things you want to spend money on, I think. Uh, other than that, what Rich said, absolutely. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys uh, both very much for uh, joining us uh, on tonight. And like I said, we'll, we'll hang out and chat for a few minutes afterwards. But thanks again, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Much pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks again to John and Richie for coming on our show tonight. Whether it be social media feeds or feature-length movies or full-on sitcoms, 
you know, creating entertainment takes a lot of vision, hard work, and passion. Of all the things that we can do in this world, sharing our experiences is one of the most important. Making people laugh, think, cry, or wonder is the greatest, or it's one of the greatest gifts that we can give someone, and adventure, thankfully, has plenty of it. So, while we wait for John's next vid to pop, please visit Putch Films and check out my new favorite small town trilogy called Route 30. Did, did I mention people should go watch Route 30? It's friggin' awesome. It's unbelievably funny. Uh, and like I said, we can all use some good laughs, especially around this time. But up next, join us in uh, two weeks for ADV Moto Live number 20, family adventuring with Vanessa, Ryan, Ruby, and Everly of the Full Throttle family from Northern Ontario. We will talk about riding with kids, getting them trained, geared up, and how it changes your life as a rider and parent. As always, your support means a lot to us and keeps the motorcycle world running. Don't forget to like, subscribe our channel, and visit AdventureMotorcycle.com for more news, reviews, videos, podcasts, merch, and mucho more. Until next time, from everyone here at ADV Moto, ride safe, have fun. <laughs>